What is up guys? Welcome back to The Bull Combo, your source for album reviews, vlogs, live music, and a whole bunch more. Today we're talking about 2009, specifically how 2009 changed the landscape of metalcore. So stick around while we talk about the five albums that threw metalcore on the map. From creativity to production level, 2009 is the year that Metalcore took a big leap into the spotlight. With album releases that would become household names and the debut of a band that would end up going on to take the genre by storm. 2009 saw the coming of age for many Metalcore artists and gave us a glimpse of what the future would hold for the genre. So without any further delay, here are five albums from 2009 that literally changed the landscape of the genre as we know it. So number one is We Came As Romans to Plant a Seed. It featured blistering breakdowns, soaring choruses, and a fresh yet familiar take on the genre as we know it. Great production and the incredibly catchy singing of Kyle Pavone took this band to a brand new level. It showcased how metalcore could be melodic while still retaining the aggressiveness that it had been known for. The influence of this album can still be heard in metalcore releases to this day. Sadly, Kyle Pavone passed away in 2018, leaving the metalcore scene reeling. However, his legacy still carries on in this album and many others. Number two on the list is Born of Osiris' album, A Higher Place. This was the second album by Boo, and we found them taking their sound to a whole new level on this album. It's probably fitting that the album's called A Higher Place, because that's really where they were taking their sound on this record. Boo really explored their sound on this album, and while it's in no way their best album, it's a really good representation of the transition in sound that the band was taking. Extremely technical guitar riffs, complemented by an overtone of lots of keys, this album gave us a glimpse into the future of metalcore, showed us where the genre could go, the levels that it could be brought to, and was really a fresh take on a lot of the more mundane, repetitive style stuff that we had been hearing from previous bands. The technicality on this album was particularly apparent and it left a lot of listeners wondering whether or not big things were in store for this band. And that was not an incorrect assessment because less than two years later, the band would write and release The Discovery, which went on to cement itself as a staple and a classic in the metalcore genre. Number three is Constellations by August Burns Red. By the time Constellations had come out, August Burns Red had already cemented themselves as heavyweights inside of the metalcore genre. Their album Messengers had shown them taking a different change in sound, a more refined, melodic tone with really aggressive guitar riffs while also incorporating a lot of melody. And Constellation saw them taking that sound to the next level. They didn't change their sound, they just refined it. They included more of that melody, more of that technicality while creating a more memorable listening experience. In addition to that, this album really showcased the leap forward that the guitarist in August Burns Red had taken and was the first album that had actual guitar solos in it, which was a major transition from their previous stuff. It should come as no surprise that August Burns Red never slowed down after this album and they're now officially at the top of the metalcore genre along with a bunch of other heavyweights in the metalcore scene. To this day Constellations is still one of the catchiest and most melodic metalcore albums that's ever been released. Now we're getting down to the last two albums here. These two albums I think have the most influence and the most significance uh, of the metalcore genre for their year and for their release time specifically. So number four is With Roots Above and Branches Below by The Devil Wears Prada. Now Prada had already placed themselves as a staple inside the metalcore genre by the time this album came out, but it really showed them taking their sound to a whole new level. Now where a lot of bands were changing their overall style, Prada didn't do that. They kept their same frantic metalcore style, but what they did do was up the production quality and up the production quality heavily. This album was so crisp and so clean. The technicality was on another level. The choruses were amazing. Jeremy DePoyster's vocals had never sounded clearer, never sounded larger than they did on this album. And in retrospect, this might be one of, if not the best album that the Delaware's Prada has ever released to this day. In recent years, they have made some changes to their sound. They've lost members, they've gained members, and they've really taken a different take on their music than they did back in 2009. But when With Roots Above and Branches Below released, it was an extremely awesome album. It was full of creativity, full of unexpectedness, and full of brutality. While the album is extremely melodic in parts, it's also extremely, extremely heavy. And while it isn't technical necessarily, or overly technical, the technicality was taken to another level in comparison to uh, albums like their previous album, Plagues. Now, Plagues definitely put them on the map in terms of metalcore, but with Roots Above and Branches Below, put them on a higher pedestal and it really showed that they could be taken seriously as a metal band. I think before this album Prada received a lot of flack for their style and a lot of people didn't really take them seriously because they use a lot of simplistic writing and a lot of simplistic guitarists in their songs. 
but this album really showed that they were trying to take things seriously, that they wanted to be taken seriously, and the end result was an extremely memorable listening experience. So number five is probably the most influential metalcore album that was released in 2009, and possibly the most influential metalcore album that's been released in the last 10 years, uh, and that would be Stand Up and Scream by Asking Alexandria. I don't think there's anyone that's a fan of the metalcore genre that doesn't know where they were when they first heard Stand Up and Scream. This album was, in a lot of ways, a spiritual successor to the metalcore genre as a whole. This showed what metalcore was capable of. It took things to a ridiculous and almost comical level at spots, and very theatrical in nature. Asking Alexandria was incorporating things from multiple bands inside of the genre, as well as things outside of the metalcore genre, creating something that was extremely unique and extremely fresh, while very, very familiar. There's a lot of references in this album to other metalcore acts that were going at the time. There was something about the aggressiveness, the rawness, and the freshness of this album that really, really made it memorable. AA burst onto the scene quickly and with authority. This album threw them to the top of the metalcore genre in less than a year. When they came to the United States, their first tour had them playing sold out shows to tons of crazy kids who were going absolutely nuts for their music. Stand Up and Scream was indeed a breakout album for metalcore as a whole. By the end of 2009, this album had spread like wildfire and there wasn't anyone inside the genre that wasn't listening to or talking about Asking Alexandria. They quickly went from openers to headliners in less than a year or two. Asking Alexandria was making waves at a speed and level that we hadn't seen a band previously do inside of the metalcore genre. And in a lot of ways, we have Asking Alexandria to thank for the popularity of metalcore today, as that popularity and that momentum never slowed down after this album was released. Right now, Asking Alexandria might be one of the most recognizable names inside of the metalcore genre, and it has this album to thank for that popularity. While more recent years have seen the band transition into a little bit of a different sound, there is absolutely no denying that in 2009, this album was THE album. It's one of the most influential metalcore albums of that year, and possibly to date. Alright guys, so there you have it, the five albums from 2009 that I feel completely redefined the genre and set the landscape for the sound that we know today. Some of these albums are probably some of your favorite albums to date. I know at least three or four of these albums are some of my favorite metalcore albums of all time. And it's really cool to look back on these albums ten years later and see how influential they really were inside of the genre. It's also really crazy to think that these albums are ten years old because a lot of them don't feel like they were released that long ago. It's crazy how time flies, especially when there's good music to listen to. I know this list is short, guys, and I know there's other albums that came out in 2009 that you might feel were more influential. If you have a list, or if you have an album that I missed that didn't make this list, feel free to comment down below and let me know. I'm really curious to see what other people feel like were really influential albums from 2009. This is something I'll probably do every year as we go on. I'll look back at the albums that were released 10 years ago and try to see where we are in terms of right now inside the genre and compare it to where the genre was 10 years ago. We can really see the growth that the genre's taken and some of these newer bands that have come out and really adopted and taken these sounds to the next level. So again guys, if you have a band that you uh, think I missed here, you think was also a really influential band that released an album in 2009 that really changed the metalcore landscape, let me know in the comments down below. If you liked this video, click that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, click that subscribe button and hit the bell to get notified. I'm going to be coming at you guys with a new video every week and I don't want you guys to miss it. Other than that guys, I want to thank you for checking out this video. As always, I hope you have a great day, a great weekend, and until next time, we'll see you soon.